Hello and welcome techies. I am Sambhav here. Today we are going to talk about array data type. This is the ninth part on data type in PostgreSQL. In case you have not watched my previous videos, please feel free to go ahead and check them out. I will leave the links in the descriptions for you. In today's session, we are going to talk about the following topics. We'll have an overview of general data types. Then we'll talk about what is an array data type. Before we dive deep into exploring array data type, first we'll try to understand what an array data type is. Then we will get into some practicals where we will create some tables with array columns. We will also learn what are the different methods of inserting values in the array column. Then once the table is created, we will start querying. We will see what are the methods or what are the different ways in which we can query array table. We will also talk about any and all operator which is commonly used in for array uh, columns, which is very helpful. We will also see the unnesting feature, which is an amazing feature for array columns. Throughout the video, we will also talk about interview questions. And as you know, we will discuss all these things practically. So let's get started. So as you know that we have already discussed about several data types, Boolean data type, numeric data type, character, date time, UUID, JSON. We have discussed all these data types in our previous videos. In case you have not checked them, please go ahead and look at it. In today's session, we'll focus on arrays data type. So when we talk about an array data type, the first question is what is an array? What is an array? That's the first thing. The array is nothing but a collection of similar data types. Right now, let's talk about what do we understand when we say array is a collection of similar data types. Now, let's assume that I am having a table. Let's assume that I am having a small table with just two columns. Let me create a small table and yeah, here we go. And let's say here we have two columns. Let's assume that the column names are, let's say customer name, assume customer name. And we have the next column as amount. Now, while creating the table, let's say assume that we have defined customer name as a character column and for amount we have defined amount column to be as numeric column, right? Now we know that this value, this table can easily hold values, any name, let's say Ron, right? Tom, right? Ram, Paul, any values it can have, right? But Similarly, let's say, for example, for amount, let's say the value is 200, 500, 700, 900, and so on and so forth. Now, if I look at this particular table with two columns, we would notice that each of the row, let's say this is the first row, right? Second row, third row, fourth row. Each of the row holds a single value. For customer name, it has got only one value called as Ron. For amount numeric column, which has again got a single value called a 200, right? Similarly, second row also holds a single value Tom. Ram also holds a third value, a single value, sorry, the third row. The fourth row also holds a single value Paul. That means we are storing a single value in each row. We are storing a single value in each row. The same thing applies for amount column as well. So here also we are storing <clears throat> a single value in each of the rows. Now, what if I want to store multiple values in the same column? That means, let's say in the first row for customer name, assume I want to store multiple values. Let's say I want to store Ron. I also want to store Tom. I also want to store Ram. And I also want to store Paul. I want to store all these values in a single row itself. That means in a, in a single cell. Right, all these values I want to store it together. Now, when we store these values together, it is called as an array. It is called as an array. That means a single field storing multiple values. Storing multiple values. Similarly, if I want to store for amount column, assume, then again I can store multiple values. Let it be 200, 
then we can have 500, then we can have 700, and then we can have 900, right? Multiple values. And this entire value I want to store in one single row, or you can say in one single cell. This entire value can be stored in one single cell, right? So here we are storing multiple values and not a single value. This is called as an array. So that's why the definition says, array is nothing but multiple values of similar types. Now the second point is similar types. What is the meaning of similar types? That means for the customer name, for the data type character, right? The data type is character here. I am holding multiple values. Similarly, for the next column amount, for the numeric data type, I am holding multiple values. That means these values are of similar type. type. That means this entire row, which is going to hold these multiple values, which is going to hold multiple values are of similar data type. So all these are of numeric data type. Second, here when we talk about all these values, though there are multiple values, but all the values are of one data type. Let's say in this case, it is character data type. So this is nothing but a structure of an array. That means I am holding multiple values in a single cell or in a single row. That's what an array is. So that's what I have mentioned here. Array is nothing but a collection, a group of similar types of values. Single data object that holds multiple values. That means here you see this is a single data object or you can consider this to be a single cell which is holding multiple values. That's what an array is. Now, <clears throat> what is the data type of an array? What is the data type of an array? So we have understood what an array is actually. Now looking at the data type, so whatever atomic level data types we have, right? For example, small int, int, big int, care, var, cat, text, decimal, numeric, and so on. Every data type has its own companion of array type. It means I may create an integer column and for integer column, I have a corresponding integer array type. It, I have a corresponding integer array type. Similarly, if I create a varchar data type, if I have a varchar data type, I can convert this varchar data type to be as a varchar array type. That means the array type is nothing but just an instruction to SQL engine stating that, see, I know that the value is going to be a varchar, but it will have multiple values. It will have multiple or group of values. That is the reason you will notice here for integer, the corresponding array companion is, sorry, small int, it is small int and the square bracket. So whenever you're defining a column to be as an array type, you use the square bracket along with their native data type. So from small int, it becomes small int and the square bracket. That means this is a native data type and this becomes your array data type. Similarly, int, this is your native data type and if you want to convert that to be an array data type, it is int and the square bracket. Similarly for big int, big int and the square bracket. This applies for different data types for char n, char n and the square data type. So this is what an array data type is. It's not like a, a, a altogether a new data type, but it is just a facility which gives for the native data type to hold multiple values. So for decimal, decimal and square bracket. So this decimal is going to hold a single value, whereas this decimal, when I say this is going to be an array, means a single cell can have multiple values. Same thing applies for numeric. So this is a, this is a, array type. So every native data type, small int, int, big int, char, whatever it is and so on, they have their corresponding array data type. Now, since we have understood this, let us do some practical where we can create a table and insert some values to under the, understand those concepts in detail. Now, let me clear this up. We don't need this anymore. Now, here, if you look at this example, I'm trying to create a table called as array table and I am, let me copy this so that I can explain it to you what we are exactly doing. So uh, let me bring my code here. So this is a query we have written in order to create the table. Now, if you notice 
if you notice what we are doing so what what is that we are doing here we are creating a table we are creating a table and the table name is array table and the table name is array table now it has got the following columns serial number company employee name employee gender employee experience and employee salary now i have kept serial serial number to be as a serial data type which we have already discussed in the previous videos which is nothing but generating integer value with an auto increment feature second one is company name which i have created as a varchar for and the length is 100 now talking about these data types you will notice they all are array data type employee name varchar 100 which is a native and then i'm using a square bracket to instruct SQL that employee name is going to be an array data type. Similarly, employee gender of care data type whose length is 1, but it is going to be an array data type. Now, when I say length 1, means means the value of a single. That means here, let's say, I am saying EMP gender, EMP gender, right? And here I'm saying length is one, right? It does not mean the total number of elements in the array. No, one does not mean the total number of elements in the array. Here, varchar 100 does not mean there are going to be 100 elements in that array. No, that length is not defined. This is the length of the individual element. For example, varchar 1, that means this is going to be either male, a single character, or female, Right? But it can have any number of values. So please be mindful this length which you are defining is for the individual elements and not the number of elements. Similarly, we have small, uh, sorry, employee experience which is of small int. Again, this is an array data type for small int. Employee salary which is again an array data type for numeric whose precision value is 9 and the scale value is 2. We have already discussed all these things in our previous videos which is going to be of array data type. So this is the table which we are planning to create here. Right? Now let me execute this piece of code and see what happens. My query has executed successfully. Now let me look at the table. Of course, my table does not contain any data because I have not inserted any values into it. But you will notice that my table has been created with all the columns, serial number, company name, employee name, employee gender, uh, employee experience and salary. Now, what you need to notice here is of their data type. See company name, which is of character varying 100. Now, employee name, character varying 100, but you see small little square brackets, which is indicating that employee name is a array data type of character varying type. Similarly, if you look at employee gender of length 1, that means individual element length is 1, but it is on of array type, which means employee gender, the square bracket indicates, is an array data type for the character data type. Similarly here, if you, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It says employee experience, which is of array data type for small int data type. So our table is ready. Now, how can we insert the values? Now in SQL, there are two methods of inserting the values. In SQL, there are two methods of inserting the values in array column. Let us have a look at it. Now. Let me bring this query here so that we can discuss the first method. Let me bring it here so that we can uh, discuss the first method. First method. Now, there are two methods. This is the first method I'm talking about. Now, if you look at, if you look at my uh, data uh, insert statement, let me also do one thing. Let me bring this up here so that it will be easy for us to understand what exactly we are doing right so let's bring this here perfect good now we got it now let's look at what this command is doing this is a very very tricky part and you must understand so what i'm doing i'm using an insert statement insert into the table name and the columns for which i'm inserting the value is company name employee name employee gender employee experience and salary I have not mentioned here serial data type, oh, sorry, serial number because that's a serial data type. So automatically the value will get generated. You know that already. Now, talking about the values. So for the company name, the first value which I'm inserting is Google. I have placed comma, 
which is a company name and while creating the data type we have defined it to be as varchar 100 right so it can accept up to 100 characters now talking about employee name this part right the first thing which you would observe here is that i am using a keyword array 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 what is this array keyword what is the use of this array keyword this is the first method where of inserting the values where we use array keyword array keyword basically acts like a constructor for the postgresql to construct all these values as an array now let's assume that if i am just using a square bracket and i'm trying to insert these values sql would be confused what are you doing actually so explicitly we will have to tell postgresql that hey listen these values these guys the values which i am inserting here are nothing but an array now in order to instruct that we use a keyword array so array is nothing but a constructor here it is nothing but a constructor here right i'm just writing the short form it is used to construct what is the use of the constructor this array keyword constructor is used to construct this as an array this is used to tell that this is going to be an array and also it helps building one to many relationship now what is one to many relationship now one to many relationship means company name right so all sorry uh, employee name all these values i am inserting for employee name so employee name one which has got multiple values that is a meaning of one to many relationship employee name you see this column for the first row one column has got many values that is why it is called as one to many relationship that is why it is called as one to many relationship right second row similarly i have given a separator comma and i am inserting the value not the second row i'm sorry this i am inserting the value for the next column which is your employee gender same method i'm using an a keyword array as a constructor and i'm passing multiple values which is of employee gender for varchar size one so you see here each value is of a single character right as i told you earlier this does not define the length of the array it does not define number of elements but it just defines the value of or the length of individual value same thing i'm doing array for the next value which is your employee experience assume this is in year six three four seven two same next column is your employee salary which is an array and i'm inserting multiple values over here so now you would have got an idea what an array keyword is doing here so this is a first method where you use array keyword now let us try to insert the value using the first method so let me execute this the query which we have discussed just now let me execute this the query has executed successfully that means one row of data would have got inserted now let me execute this to see the table now this is the actual value now this is the actual first row let me remove this and let me uh, bring this up here right let me bring this up here Now you see here, this is our first row of data. This is our first row of data. So we have an employee name, which has got multiple values, like Ron, Tom, Rita, Sita, Gita, one column with multiple values. Whereas you can see in company name, which is a character varying, not an array column, can hold only one values. Whereas employee name, which is of array data type for the corresponding native character varying data type, but holds multiple values. Same thing applies for employee gender, and it has got multiple values, male, female, 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 right? Employee salary, employee experience, employee salary, holding multiple values together. So this is how actually an array table looks like. This is how your value will look like, right? Let me bring it a little closer, show that this value is clear right now there is a second method of inserting the value let's 
understand the second method let's understand the second method now if you have understood the first method the second method is going to be pretty easy because it is very much similar to what we have discussed right now if if you look at it if you look at it the method of insertion is very much similar to the first method insert into column names values microsoft now here in spite of in spite of using in the previous method we have used a keyword array we have used a keyword array to instruct sql that the values which we were inserting is of array type and within the square bracket we have inserted multi -va multiple values separated by comma right in this example you should be mindful about two things first here first thing to observe here is that in order to instruct sql that we are going to instruct we are going to create an array this is an array of values the first thing is that we are using a flower bracket the second in the second method we are using a flower bracket inside the flower bracket every value is in enclosed in double quotes so let's say for example the first value is let's say a assume example this should be within double quotes comma the next array value the next array element again it should be in double quotes b again the next value should be within double quotes c right and each value separated by comma second point is that each value must be enclosed in double quotes now this entire is an array for one particular column let's say for example employee name let's say this value which we are inserting is for employee name right now when you are in when you are inserting the value for the for a column employee name this entire value should be enclosed in single quotes see i have used a single quote here this entire value should be enclosed in single quote so let's summarize what we discussed it shouldn't be confusing first thing the value should be enclosed in curly braces or flower bracket individual values individual values character values must be in double quotes separated by comma the entire array value must be enclosed in single quote so these three things you must remember so you see here and individual values abhi is enclosed in double quotes shiv is enclosed in double quotes nilu is enclosed in double quotes and this entire array value is enclosed in single quotes right similarly for uh, employee gender each value is enclosed in single uh, sorry double quotes and the entire array value is enclosed in single quotes right so this is a second method of inserting values so fundamentally there are two methods one is a array method second one is the curly bra braces or the flower or the flower bracket method right you must remember this in uh, format double quotes and single quotes and flower bracket now let's try executing the values in our table using the second method so let me execute this my query has executed successfully now let's look into the table so you would notice my values have inserted in the table successfully right so employee name uh, employee gender employee experience and everything is in the right format it is in the right format so two rows of values we have inserted now you might ask me is it possible for us to combine both the methods together and insert the value in a single statement means can we use array that is the first method and also the flower bracket together in a single insert statement to insert the values of course you can do that that is our third example so i am using i am inserting values to all those rows but in both the formats the first method where we have used array and the second format or the second method where we have used flower bracket so let me execute this and let's see how the data looks like right now if i execute this query here sorry if i execute this query over here you would see that we have got four rows of data one two three four google microsoft facebook apple employees name employees gender employees experience employee salary so i hope you would have understood how can we create a table in uh, how can we create a table with array columns 
how can we insert the values into it how does the data look like what are the different methods of inserting values now once the table is created we would be interested in querying the table we would like to perform some queries on the table right so uh, in today's session i will give you uh, uh, we will discuss about how to access or how to query the tables in detail now let us look at it right so we don't need this let me clear this for us so we have already discussed the first method of insertion which says that we have used array keyword array is nothing but a constructor which is used to construct array of values this is to tell SQL that we are inserting multiple values with one to many relationship this we have already discussed second method of insertion we have also discussed notice that when you use curly braces you use single quotes to wrap the array and the double quotes to wrap the text of array items we have discussed this already now when we talk about querying of table when we talk about querying of table we use a subscript method we use a subscript method now this subscript method is pretty easy it's nothing to worry about it's very straightforward the subscript method is nothing but what what is the meaning of subscript method when I say subscript method it means in order to query a table I will use a column name let's say for example here it is employee salary which is a column name right if you look at my table employee salary now in order to query the table or access the elements let's say for example I want to access the value 50,000 45,000 if I zoom in a little bit you will be able to see the value right 70,000 50,000 now this each row contains multiple values each row contains multiple values let me bring this up so that you know it will be more clear for us to you know understand just give me a moment let me bring this up till here now let me bring this here okay now let's assume that I want to access employee name employee name but not all the elements assume I want to access only the first element in my employee name let's say for example Ron now how can I do that if I simply write select employee name from the table name it will return this entire column it will not return a single value it will return the entire column now if you want to access individual items individual items of your array field then you must use a subscript method now what is a subscript method in this example let's say I have a column called as employee name I have a column called as employee name now in order to use a subscript that means I want to individually access the elements I use a square bracket I use a square bracket now this square bracket you inside the square bracket you will have to denote the position of the element let's say for example Ron is in the first place Tom is in the second Rita is in the third Sita is in the fourth and Gita is in the fifth place so suppose I want to access the first element which is your Ron so I will write the position value which is your one index value basically right so it is one similarly if you wanted to access Tom then you can mention two now there is a syntax for it the square bracket actually follows syntax so the let, let's say the syntax is m colon n where m is nothing but your start value m is nothing but your start value whereas n is nothing but your end value end value now the start value the indexing in this always starts with one always remember indexing here in this array field in PostgreSQL always starts with one for example in Python if you create a list if you have idea about Python the indexing starts with zero the first element is referred to be as a zeroth element it is a the zeroth position but in SQL the first in PostgreSQL the first the indexing value is nothing but one that means you will have one as a first value right n that means let's say n so n is nothing but the end value suppose I want to access value up to Rita so how first position second position third position so I will say 1 colon 
3 up to the third position. This is a meaning of subscript. This is a meaning of subscript and this is how you can actually access the elements of the value. One based numbering for array elements means that the indexing value starts from 1 and not from 0. You can use m to n to define the range of value which we have discussed. m is nothing but your start value and n is nothing but your end value, right? What is your start position and the end position? That means to you know whenever you want to access the range of values. Now, what will happen if you, let's say in this case, in this case, if I'm saying employee name, let's say I'm saying employee underscore name and I'm writing here 100. I don't have 100 values. I only have 5 values. In this case, what will happen? Your PostgreSQL will return null values. Always remember, if it is out of range, the PostgreSQL is going to return null values. That, I have, that is what I have mentioned here. Returns nulls for values out of range. Now, since we have discussed all these things, let us practically try to implement this. Now let's look at the first question. The first question says, can you please fetch employee name, employee gender and employee experience from the array table? Our table name is array table. So from that array table, we are supposed to extract employee name, employee gender and employee experience. So my output would look something like this, employee name, employee gender, employee experience and it should display the all the values of the employee name for the first row that means i'm looking for all the values i'm not being selective to look at first row second row or third row nothing of that short right so let us execute the first query let us execute the first query so i'm using select employee name employee gender employee experience from the array table let me select this and execute it and let's see what the result is okay so we have got the result, the same result which I was talking about. So we have employee name, employee gender, employee experience, and we got all the values. So if you just want to select the columns, so it is the same standard format, select and then column name separated by commas from and then the table name, right? Now let's look at the next question. The next question says, fetch second employee name and employee gender from the array table. So let me bring this up here and let me delete all of them. Now the question says fetch the second. The next question says please fetch the second employee name and employee gender. That's what the question says. Oh right employee name and employee gender. It means I am uh, I am asked to fetch the value from the employee name and employee gender but only the second values that means I should be getting Tom, I should be getting Shiv, I should be getting Nirbhai, I should be getting Ravi. Similarly from the employee gender column again I am only looking for the second value male. So how can we do that? So by this time you would have guessed it already employee name we will use a square bracket and it will mention two similarly for employee gender we'll write employee gender right and i'll use a square bracket and i'll make it as two from the employee table right now let's look at the query so that is what a query is find the second name and gender uh, from the array table right now let's execute this now if I execute this, my expected output would be Tom, Shiv, Nirbhai, Ravi from the employee name and in the employee gender column, my output should be male, male, male and male. So let's see if it works. Yeah, we got that. Tom, Shiv, Nirbhai, Ravi, which is nothing but our uh, second value and uh, employee gender is male, male, male. That is what we have got, right? Now let's go to the next question. The next question says, fetch fourth value of employee name, employee gender and employee salary from the array table. So now this is clear, right? Fetch the fourth value. Now if I look at, if I look at my fourth value, you would notice that all the rows does not have four values. Some of the rows only have two values. Some of the rows only have three values. Now if I'm interested, what I'm trying to say is, now the question says fourth value, fourth value. So here I have one, two, three, four. So this time I'm looking to extract Sita. 
but here there is no fourth value here also we do not have fourth value but here we have fourth value as manju one two three four right similarly here we have a fourth value f no fourth value no fourth value and here is f now what will it return in this case it will return only these values i mean sorry the fourth value is sita manju and sorry not this f but this f and then the values right it will return only these values let's check it out now let me execute this so you see my query employee name fourth value employee gender fourth value employee salary also i'm picking it up so employee this is experience but salary similarly will uh, fetch the fourth value now if i execute it you see here sita now this values you should see null why it is showing null because the second row does not have fourth value the third row does not have fourth value but the fourth row has Man manju same thing is for gender so the first row has got the fourth value as female then the second and the third row does not have a fourth value so it is throwing me null and then we have f same thing applies for employee salary as well now let's look at the uh, third question the third question says fetch first three values of the employee name employee gender from the array table now if i say first three names now if you look at first three name what are the first three name values you will have here can you find out yes so if from the employee name the first three values are nothing but rita nilu here we do not have the three va third value right so here we will have rita first three values okay i'm sorry the first three value is ron tom and rita that is what your first three value is second in this abhi shiv and nilu i'm talking about not the second value let me delete this i'm sorry this is about first three values first three values first three values now in order to get this first three values what is that we are what is the result from employee name i'll be getting rom i will be getting tom and i'll be getting rita this is my expected value abhishev nilu here only amit and nirbhay there is no third value so it, it should return only these two values similarly for the last row the value should be anuj ravi and again anuj right which is again the first three values now now Oh, sorry this is Anju now how can we do that there are two methods so I'm just talking about one of the column let's say employee name because the same logic will apply for rest of them the first method is I can either explicitly specify one two or three is it a right way of specifying is it a right way of specifying one two and three yes yes okay so not so this is what i am specifying one two and three but the problem here is it will only accept the value in the form of m is to n that means this range which i am getting needs to be transformed to this format so what i will do is the start value is one and the end value is three end value is three so this transformation this range of values which you are creating needs to be transformed in this particular format i will also show you what will happen if i pass my values like this don't worry now let us try to execute this using the first method so i am saying select this and i am executing it so you see it is returning the first three values serial number employee name and for the gender the first three values now we also talked what will happen if i pass my value something of 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 3 what am i trying to say first value second value third value from employee gender also first value second value third value so if i execute this it will throw an error right it will throw an error the syntax error at this right because the reason of it throwing an error is because sql is not able to apprehend what is the meaning of it if you want to specify a range from 1 to 3 it needs to be transformed to m is to n that means your start value 
and your end value that is the reason why it is throwing error that is why i have shown this to you explicitly so that you don't make mistake passing values like this one comma two comma three i hope this is clear now there is one more way of passing the same value this is the first method which we have seen there is one more way of passing the value i can pass the value without indicating the first value and directly colon and directly three if i pass the value what is the meaning now here you will say hey we did not pass the first start value we are only passing the end value the meaning here is we are not passing the start value but only the end value or the last value which we want to access when you do not define this when you do not define the start position then the positioning will always start from the beginning that means from the first element from the first element so this way also you can specify let's say for example if i want to access first 10 elements i don't have to explicitly explicitly say 1 to 10 even if i write like this sql will understand okay since you have not specified this by default i will return the values from the first position from the first position let's try this format as well now so you see here employee name i am just not passing the start value for employee gender also i'm not passing the first value or the start value i'm only passing the end value now let me execute this and you see i'm getting the value the same results the same result so remember the format now next question says fetch third value Oh, sorry third value till the last value that means from the third value that means in this case Rita Sita and Gita till the last I have to access Nilu and whatever the value is from the third till the last value now what can we do in this case this format which you have studied is really very helpful helpful how let us see that so I have to say I have to instruct SQL that hey for let's say employee name for employee name i want to access the first value the start value is from three but till the end till the end now see in this case i know i have only five elements as maximum so i can pass that and it will still return the result but what if you know you have hundreds of values in your single row you may not know so the best way to do is not to define the last value you can leave it empty and sql is intelligent enough to extract all the values till the end right three colon and i'm not defining this i will also show you suppose here it's five suppose i am anticipating that there are 50 elements or let's say 10 elements in that situation what will happen that also we'll see but the right way of defining this is start value after colon don't define anything means by default or sql is intelligent enough to understand that okay you wanted to fetch all the values that means after colon no value means till the last value so let's execute this let's execute this you see here i am getting all the values third value rita sita and gita right and so on for all the female 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 right female female 472 we are getting the same result okay this is salary i'm sorry so salary value is not listed here so salary value we am getting the third value fourth value fifth value right now suppose suppose i assume that i have 10 elements right i have 10 elements because i do not know how many i have not counted how many numbers are there now since this is a very small table with only five max five elements in one list as a maximum number of elements but assume we have a huge table where you have a lot of values and i'm anticipating that there are 10 values assume now if i execute this what will happen will it give me the same result or a different result you see it will give you the same result that means if you are exceeding the number of values if you are exceeding the number of values then that means if you're exceeding the number of end elements then the number of elements actually in the array does not make any difference does not make any difference you can do this even if i pass thousand or ten thousand it does not matter because it is trying to search values up to these many elements and whatever it is it will return me the query but you see here it has taken 151 milliseconds now if i execute this the same query is one taking 158 milliseconds right so there are different ways of doing it i personally don't prefer this this looks little clumsy 
this is a smart way of doing it that okay you can actually use this value right that means use no need to define the end value in order to fetch all the values right because anticipating how many elements are there doesn't looks good all the time now last question here is fetch second to fourth values for the employee name now this you would have guessed already right so the next question is fetch second to fourth values of the employee name employee salary employee gender from the array table so you have to give second position to fourth position so employee name is two to four employee salary is two to four employee gender is two to four right let me execute this and let's see what the result is yeah so this is what our result is i hope you have understood how to access the value how you can query your table uh, for the entire column or individual column or a range of columns right now next topic what we are going to talk about is filtering data using where clause in array table now this is also very very important it's not only about we extracting the values or we are just fetching the values but sometimes we also need to filter the data based on where clause in fact uh, in my upcoming videos, I will talk in detail about arrays where you will learn how to, you know, perform different operations on array table. This is all that is also possible. But since this video is limited only to data type, I also wanted to give you a little bit of, you know, practical demonstration of how you can work with array tables. Now, array table, this is very, very important from your interview point of view. The previous section also, that is your, how can you access individual met, uh, elements, you must remember. Then, then the next one thing is filtering data using where clause. Now, this is pretty straightforward. If you have understood the previous concept where you were able to extract individual values, then this part is pretty easy. Now, the first question says, identify the salary amounts which are less than 80,000 in the first position in the first position. I'm talking only about this value I'm talking only about the first element. So let me bring this up here so that we can Clearly understand this. So here it is saying please filter out the data based on employee salary but whose first value is less than 80,000 first value that means our filter condition should apply only on this first value which is less than 80,000 so our result our result would be 70,000 and this 70,000 so we will have to trim out this right we are looking for values less than 80,000 so how can we do that this is pretty straight straightforward select staff from array table where Employee salary, that's a column name. I'm accessing the first element and I'm simply specifying the condition less than 80,000. I'm accessing the first element. That is what we learned in the previous section, how to access the elements of an array first element and I'm applying the condition 80,000. Now, if I execute this, it will return only two rows because that is the only these two are the only rows which is satisfying the condition. See 70,000, 70,000 actual value had 80,000, 80,000 also, but it is filtered out because of this particular condition, less than 80,000, right? Now, let's do one more question. The question says, find the company who has only male employees from the array table. Now, if I look at my table, let me execute this. If I look at my table, you see, we have Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Apple. These are the employees, the gender is here. Now, my question says, find the company who has, which has only male employee from the array table. So if you look at this particular data set, Facebook is the only company which has got male employees, only male employees, but other company like Google, Microsoft, Apple, they all have female candidates, right? Female employees, but Facebook is only company which has got male employees. So how can we perform this? How can we check on this? The syntax here is select star from array table where, where. Now you see this is little in reverse order. If I would have got a normal column, I would have written, uh, let's say if it is not an array column, so I would have written employee underscore gender is equal to male or female. Let's say male because we have to find which is only male. So this is what we would have applied. I'm sorry, this is EMP, EMP gender. This is what we would have applied in a regular uh, uh, where condition where the column is a normal column, not an array column. So column name, comparison operator and the value. 
but here <clears throat> it is slightly reversed first the value first the value then the comparison operator and then employee gender the reason employee gender which is nothing but a column name but i have used all now there are two options there are two options basically one is called as all and the second is called as any all means all the values must be male here if i talk about this condition it means i am checking all the values to be male right first value is male second value is male but third fourth and fifth value if you look at in look at in this particular column first row i'm sorry it is female 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 that means it will not satisfy this condition all right all means all the values should be of the same type if i'm saying m which means i am looking for all the values in this array to be as male that is a meaning of all that means all values the second option the second option is any any means any of the value can be m any one value also can be m that is a meaning of m any now if let's execute this and see what is the result so let me execute this and show you the result so you see we are getting facebook that means facebook is the only company in our example which had all the values as male which all had all the values as male right suppose if i give any 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 means any means what any of the value could be male any of the value could be male now if i execute this now if i execute this so it should return all the rows why because all the rows has m similarly let's me change here to be as f female that means any of the value should be female so automatically facebook will be trimmed out see if i execute this my facebook is trimmed out why because it did not have any f value in the array for employee gender column so i hope you would have understood the meaning of all and any all means all the value that means this condition is applied on all the elements of the array whereas any means this condition will be applied on employee gender each row each element and it can satisfy any other condition one value is also true then also it will return the value if two female values then also three four any number of values if it has got any number of female values it will satisfy the condition that is a meaning of any so i hope you would have understood what is any and and the next interesting one is unnest unnest function is used to expand an array to multiple rows this is also a common question asked in interview what is the meaning of unnest in array right now let's look at our table let's assume i am selecting only these three columns assume that i am only selecting the three column which is serial number company name employee name and array table now let me let me bring this up so that we can understand so we can understand what an unnest actually does right so this is the data we have now we are trying to understand unnest we are trying to understand unnest what is the definition of unnest unnest definition says it is used to expand any array to multiple rows any array to multiple rows now it means if you look at this data carefully if you look at this particular data carefully employee name is an array column so it has got multiple values ron tom rita sita geeta right ron tom rita sita geeta now according to the definition this will be split into multiple rows that means if i unnest this particular value this particular row i should be getting the value for ron in one row in the next row i should be getting tom in the next row i should be getting rita and the next row i will be getting sita and in the next row i will be getting geeta yes or no that is a meaning of unnest that is a meaning of unnest expand an array to multiple rows an array an array to multiple rows so you see one array has been expanded to multiple rows that means number of array elements is equivalent to number of rows now then you must ask me okay 
that is fine we can understand this but what about this guy company name this is not an array element serial number is not an array element what will happen to these values they are not array element if you are unnesting this then the values which are not an array element they will get repeated for the number of times the elements are there that means in this case here google will be there because they all are working in google 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 that means if the values are not an array value then it will repeat itself in all the rows till my array value is unnested similarly serial number one 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 right now what will be the value for the next row now if it comes to the next row again we have an array value which has got three elements so what will happen this will be unnested that means this will again be broken down into three different rows so i'll get a b a b h i a b then we will get shiv and then we will get nilu right now what about this of course you know that it will be microsoft i'm just writing this short form I'm sorry about my handwriting guys Microsoft Microsoft and the serial number is nothing but two 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 since they are these two values are not an array values so they will repeat themselves they will repeat themselves this is an actual meaning of a nest this is a actual meaning of a nest that is what an unnest function does second point non array columns gets repeated for each row see non array columns gets repeated for each row non array columns gets repeated for each row now let us execute this let us execute this and see what the result is so how do you apply unnest unnest the function name and you can pass the value you can pass the column name so let me execute this and show you the result so you see here ron tom rita sita gita they all work in google and serial number is one it has been expanded into rows same thing is for uh, Abhi, Shiv, Nilu, Microsoft, Amit, Nirbhaya, Nirbhaya, Anuj, Ravi, Anju and Manju, all these things, right? So you understood how an unnesting is done. I hope unnesting is clear. Now guys, in case if you have any questions after watching this video, please feel free to post your uh, questions in the comment section. Also, in case if you want me to, you know, teach or uh, demonstrate any particular topic which you want to learn please feel free to post them in the comment section i will definitely create a video for them also thank you so much for your time and patience you have a great day ahead thank you very much